Thank you very much. Uh, for me personally, I'm Victor Noitiri, uh, Director of Education, Lejukuku. Uh, for me personally, it has been an insightful interaction. Uh, I've learned a lot of things, and I hope that uh, going forward, it will impact a lot of the things that we do at our various offices. But coming from the public sector and engaging and knowing what is happening in the corporate environment, I'm trying to just oppose the two, and I see a lot of conflict within the two opposing enterprises. Now, when you have a monolithic large organization like a public sector organization, where driving change is met with a whole force, sometimes not that it is impossible, it is possible, but when you don't have the same clout of mindset that can help you drive that change, it becomes a problem. I want to find out how possible can it be that from where we sit, as some, some of us, where some of us sit as public sector um, duty bearers, to drive this change, having at the back of our minds that along the line, you have people at the top who, drive, who are supposed to drive and influence this change. How can we operationalize this culture within my space as a district director, municipal director of education, such that going forward, the, even though it is an, a public organization, the culture will be well defined such that it will lead more to productivity and employee performance at the end of the day. And this is my take. And in, ad, in addition to that, in enshrining this culture within the workspace, we need to communicate it and communicate it effectively. Sometimes we write it and we post it on the wall thinking that people are reading it. They will not necessarily be reading, they are only seeing what you have written. But when we don't make that effort to communicate it at every fora so that it becomes part of their daily lives, you will see that over time it will fizzle out. So going forward, that must be communicated so that over time we become part and we see the culture and the attitudes reflecting in whatever we do. So these are the two views that I want to express. How can we as a public sector organization enshrine these dynamics within the system? Because it's easier to operate it within the corporate world because of the structure done within the public space. And then also communicating uh, this culture within the given environment that we find ourselves. I hope I'm clear. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah, great question. Um, I'd like to start by saying that the same people, the same employees who work in the private sector are the same employees who work in the public sector. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they go back and forth. They go into the public sector, they come into the uh, public sector. So it really defines, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of the things that I mentioned um, when I was speaking earlier. It has to start with the leadership team really believing that this is what we want to do. Now, if they don't believe that, or if they don't buy into that, it's going to be a wasted effort. Because they not only have to put resources into it, they have to put time, they have to put commitment into it. So if an HR leader is trying to get the leadership team, the board, whoever, to be on board with what the culture change should be, it should start with making the compelling reason why is this going to be important? Why is this going to transform, you know, the, the education ministry said, right? Why is this going to transform our education ministry? What's in it for you as the CEO? How, or the minister, how are people going to see you, right? In the next two years, when we've done this successfully, what does this mean for us who are the workers um, in the ministry? What does this mean for us? And so, if you're looking at bringing people into the organization, what are these new values that you want to embody, to instill into your organization? Are you asking the kind of questions, are you recruiting based on that to identify people like that to bring into your organization? Two, are you rewarding the behaviors that you want to instill? So I mentioned um, you know, a teamwork culture, right? So you want to have a teamwork culture but then everybody works very siloed and everybody just has individual goals and there are no shared goals and there are no shared purposes, et cetera. 
you have to ensure that you are rewarding people based on that. So once you've communicated to people that, look, this is what's going to take us forward. This is why it's important for you. And this is why you need to help us do this. Then you have to reward the behaviors as well. And they have to see it being done. One, being embodied by the leadership team. And, and two, that people are held accountable when they go against the behaviors that you want to instill. Um, and then the other thing I would say as well is that it should be when people um, do exceptionally well, when you have, you can have champions of change in various departments. So, I mean, you have various departments, various functions and stuff. Sometimes it's easier to start in smaller teams, right? So incentivize smaller teams, find change champions. And sometimes a good trick is to find the, the people who are the, the loudest mm -hmm. <laughs> and who actually oppose the change, right? And make them the champions of change. Make some of them the champions of change. Bring them to the table, have side conversations with them about why this is important. And once you get their buy-in, people listen to them. These are people that, you know, you've identified that this is somebody that people listen to. Have them start the small discussions in their teams. Um, when we, we have our cultural set of values, we call the, the spirit of Vodafone. Um, and before we start any meeting, we start with uh, somebody has to share a spirit moment, okay? And so that was a way for us to help people, one, remember what the spirit was, and two, to actually find examples. So the spirit of Vodafone, basically, you have to find an example that you've seen somebody embodying that you would mention, and sometimes you can recognize the person, or you have seen an example of where the person didn't embody a spirit of Vodafone. So I would say those are some of the tips that um, um, I would give. Okay, so I, I will also add something that is constantly said. Whatever gets supervised gets done. So if they, in, in, and especially in the public sector where it is difficult to, um, the bureaucracy is so much, to get one thing approved from the top, uh, you know, presentation before it comes back, it takes a lot of time. But whichever way, in a small way, you start at your district where you are supervising, whichever you have um, the authority to put in place, it has to be supervised. If it never gets supervised, it never gets done. I, I was complaining about a road that was done in December, and by January, uh, by June, December last year, and June this year, they were on it patching. I mean, a tie road, the road completely removed, because nobody supervised the road, how it was done. Six months that we spent money, now it's going to cost us more. So I'll just emphasize the fact that if you put any policy in place, or practice in place. You, you don't supervise it. Nobody is in charge. Nobody is held accountable. It will never be maintained. In the private sector, as it's, it's not that it's easy. Everybody gets involved, and money is spent, and people are held accountable. People are rewarded, and others are sanctioned for not leaving it. But if nobody ever gets sanctioned, or nobody gets reward, what will motivate them to uh, practice whatever has been put in place. So supervision is very important from the top level, the middle level, and all that, those levels to get the results that is expected. Mm. I think I'll just re-echo the points that have been made. I, I actually started my career from the public sector, and so I do understand <laughs> the bureaucracy in the... the Enyamu Papayujuma, Enyamu Papayujuma, attitude in, the, in some of the places. I trust that a lot is changing now. And so for me, in, in all that has been said, the key point is the tone from the top. As a leader, what tone are you setting? What vision have you set? Um, Lejokuku, district, is your vision to be the best district in greater Accra or in Ghana? And what is in it 
for the colleagues you work with. That if we win this, this and that and that and that. Human beings respond to rewards. Be it negative or positive. Human beings respond to rewards. So set the tone. If you say everyone should be in the office by six, you be in the office by six. Of course, within the first six months, even one year, I then a Jumane of Papadia. Why not say World Cup? I mean, yeah, the usual thing. And 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 when you listen to these comments, you, you can actually be discouraged. But you have the vision. You've made it plain that you may run with it. There would be barriers. Um, I would talk about the change curve, the S curve. You would have troughs, you have mountains, you have valleys. But the vision has been made clear and is plain and explained to the whole team. Run with it. You would have challenges, but run with that vision. The reward thereof will vindicate you. Thank you so, so much to our panelists and to everyone that has made a contribution. I think we have reached the end of the open forum and the panel discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, help me acknowledge our speakers, Madam Ashoka and Mr. La and Mr. Eastman. Thank you so, so much.